All right. We're on page 46. We're going to read one more chapter today, and then I'm going to have, we're going to stop and I'm going to go, we're going to do some review questions together. So one chapter we're going to read, and then we're going to do review questions together. Okay. So remember in our last chapter, that guy just showed up at her door. Phoebe's convinced they're a lunatic. What's your question, Landon? Do you think we'll finish this uh, before the AR thing is? No, we will not finish this before April 16th because it, it we only have today, tomorrow, Thursday, and then one more week. We'll finish it by the end of the year, but not by the 16th. We are on page 46, Isabella. Chapter nine, it's called The Message. On the way to Mary Luce, Phoebe said, Mary Luce family is not nearly as civilized as ours. In what way, I asked. Oh, you'll see, Phoebe said. Mary Lou Finney and Ben Finney, Ben Finney were both in our class at school. At first I thought they were sister and brother, but Phoebe told me they were cousins and that Ben was living with Mary Lou's family, family temporarily. Apparently, there was always at least one stray relative living in the Finney, in at the Finney's temporarily. It was complete pandemonium at the Finney's. Mary Lou had an older sister and three brothers. In addition, there were her parents and Ben. There were footballs and basketballs lying all over the place and boys sliding down the banisters and leaping over tables and talking with their mouths full and interrupting everyone with endless questions. Phoebe took one look around and whispered to me, Mary Lou's parents do not seem to have much control over things. Phoebe could sound a bit prissy sometimes. Mr. Finney was lying in the bathtub with all his clothes on reading a book. From Mary Lou's bedroom window, I saw Mrs. Finney lying on top of the garage with a pillow under her head. What's she doing? I asked. Mary Lou peered out the window. King of Kings. He's taking a nap. When Mr. Finney got out of the bathtub, he went to the backyard and tossed football around with Dennis and Dougie, two of Mary's brother, Mary Lou's brother. Mr. Finney shouted over here and that away and way to go. The previous weekend, we had had a school sports day. Parents are watching their children show off. And there were even some events for the parents, too, such as the three-legged race and past the grapefruit. My father could not come, but Mary Lou's parents were there, and so were Phoebe's. Phoebe had said the games are a little childish sometimes, which is why her parents don't usually participate. Her parents stood at the sidelines while Mr. and Mrs. Finney ran around shooting, shouting over here and way, way to go. In the three-legged race, the Finneys kept falling over. Phoebe said, I wonder if Mary Lou was embarrassed because of the way her parents are acting. I didn't think it was embarrassing. I thought it was nice, but I didn't say that to Phoebe. I think that deep down, Phoebe thought it was nice too, and she wished her own parents would act more like the Finneys. She couldn't admit this, though. And in a way, I like this about Phoebe, that she tried to defend her family. So I, in my opinion, the Phoebes just, or that the Phoebes, but the Finneys just sound like fun people, you know, like, Things are always going on. They're not afraid to like participate in things with their kids and stuff where Phoebe's family, you know, is super prim, super proper, can't, you know, get their clothes dirty or anything. Hmm. On the day that Phoebe and I met the potential lunatic and went over to Mary Lou's, a couple other peculiar things happened. We were sitting on the floor of Mary Lou's room and Phoebe was telling Mary Lou about the mysterious potential lunatic. Mary Lou's brother, brother, Dennis, Dougie, and Tommy kept dashing in and out of the room, leaping on the bed and squirting us with squirt guns. Mary Lou's cousin, Ben, was lying on her bed, staring at me with his black, black eyes. They looked like two sparkly black discs set into big round sockets. His dark eyelashes were long and feathery, casting shadows on his cheeks. I like your hair, he said to me. Can you sit on it? Yes, if I want. Ben picked up a piece of paper from Mary Lou's desk, lying back down on the bed, drew a picture of a lizard-like creature with long black hair that, as it round down, ran down the lizard's back under the bottom, became a chair with legs. Underneath this, Ben had written, Salamander sitting on her hair. Very amusing, Phoebe said. She left the room, and Mary Lou followed her. I turned around to hand the drawing back to Ben. Just as he leaned forward, he mashed his lips into my collarbone. His lips pressed there a moment. My nose was pressed into his hair, which smelled like grapefruit. Then he rolled off the bed, grabbed the drawing, and dashed out of the room. 
did he actually kiss my collarbone? And if he did, why did he do this? Was he supposed to land somewhere else, like my mouth, for example? This was a chilling thought. Had I imagined it? Maybe he was merely brushing against me as he was rolling off the bed. On the way home from Mary Lou's that day, Phoebe said, wasn't it, well, loud there? I didn't mind, I said. I was thinking of something my father once said to my mother. We'll fill the house up with children. We'll fill it right up to the brim. But they didn't fill it up. It was just me and them. And then it was just me and my father. When we got back to Phoebe's house, her mother was lying on the couch, dabbing her eyes with a tissue. Is something wrong? Phoebe asked. Oh, no, Mrs. Winterbottom said. Nothing's wrong. Then Phoebe told her mom about the potential lunatic who had come to the house earlier. This news upset Mrs. Winterbottom. She wanted to know exactly what he had said and what Phoebe said and what he looked like and how he acted and how Phoebe acted on and on. At last, Mrs. Winterbottom said, I think we better not mention this to your father. She reached forward as if to hug Phoebe, but Phoebe pulled away. Later, Phoebe said, that's odd. Usually my mother tells my father absolutely everything. Maybe she's trying to save you from getting into trouble for talking with a stranger. I still don't like keeping a secret from him, Phoebe said. We walked out onto her porch, and there, lying on the top of the steps, was a white envelope. There was no name or anything on the outside. I thought it was one of those advertisements for painting your house or cleaning your carpets. Phoebe opened it. Gosh, she said. Inside was a small piece of blue paper, and on it was printed this message. Don't judge a man until you've walked two moons in his moccasins. And if you remember, that quote is on the cover of our book. What an odd thing, Phoebe said. When Phoebe showed the message to her mother, Mrs. Winterbottom clutched at her collar. Who could it be for, Mrs. Winterbottom asked. Mr. Winterbottom came in the back door carrying his golf gloves. Look, George, Mrs. Winterbottom said. Who could this be for? I couldn't say, really, Mr. Winterbottom said. But George, why would someone send us this message? I couldn't say, Norma. Maybe it isn't for us. Not for us, Mrs. Winterbottom said, but it was on our steps. Really, Norma, it could be for anyone. Maybe for Prudence or Phoebe. Phoebe, Mrs. Winterbottom asked, is it for you? For me, Phoebe said, I don't think so. Well, who is it for, Mrs. Winterbottom said. She was awfully worried. I believe she thought it came from the potential lunatic. Once again, Phoebe's family they're busy people, okay? Like, they, they're thinking everyone else is crazy, but really, who's crazy? Her family. All right. Now, I'm going to be asking us questions. If you want to answer with your voice, okay, you have to make sure your volume works. Please raise your hand in the raise your hand thing. We're not answering in the chat. I want verbal answers. So, first, we could, we could do a few vocab, do a few little vocab things. So, does anyone remember what cadaver means? Anyone? Cadaver? Cadaver? Landon, what does cadaver mean? Dead body. It does mean dead body. Good job. Um, I'm just thinking of other words that were a little bit tricky within our thing. Does anyone know what diabolical means? We read the word diabolical in our story. What is diabolical? Who's raising their hands? Isabella, you want to give it a try? Um, Something like crazy? Kind of. So if something's diabolical, like a diabolical plan, it means devilish or wicked. A devilish or wicked plan. All right, what about the word ambush? If you ambush someone... What does that mean, Paisley? You trap someone. Um, kind of. Normally in ambush, you might trap them, but an ambush is a surprise attack. Okay. So if you, you know, ambush someone on Halloween, you might jump out of your bushes and scare them. Okay. Ambush, surprise attack. And then we also read the word pandemonium in that last chapter when we were talking about the Finney's house. Anyone would know what pandemonium means? It's a good word. All right, fun. Oh, Evan, you want to give it a try? I think pandemonium means like something really crazy or kind of psychopathic. It does not mean psychopathic. It does mean a little bit crazy. So pandemonium means utter chaos. So 
that's what Sal said when they were at the Finney's house that it was pandemonium. Like it was chaos. You know, there were kids everywhere and there were people everywhere and there were balls everywhere. And dad was hanging out in the bathtub reading a book. And then they were playing games and it was just chaos. But chaos in a good way. So there's that. All right. So we had some similes in these past four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These past six chapters. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These past six chapters, there were some similes. And similes are when we compare something using like or as, in case you forgot. Does anyone remember what Mrs. Cadaver's voice was compared to? Phoebe compared Mrs. Cadaver's voice to something. Anyone remember what it was? Zach? Dead leaves? Yeah, good job. They compared her voice to dead leaves. You know, it was like crackly and all that. Uh, and then um, Mrs. Cadaver's strength was also compared to something, but I don't remember what it was. I don't remember if it was an ox. It was an ox. Okay, Mrs. Cadaver's strength was compared to an ox. That was a simile. And then also we read one more simile just in that last chapter when she was talking about um, Ben's eyes, which is um, Mary Lou's cousin who lives with them, that his eyes are black, black, and they were, too, like, they were like two sparkly discs. So that was another simile. All right. Now, on to question time. Why does Sal think it's remarkable that Mrs. Partridge correctly guessed Phoebe's age. Does anyone remember why Sal thought that was so remarkable? No, Mark, you're not in my reading RTI. Haley, answer for me. She thought it was so remarkable because she was blind. Right, she's blind. And so, like, she literally touched her face and heard her voice and knew how old she was. So that's why Sal thought it was so remarkable. And then on to the next question that I had was, what does Phoebe learn about Mrs. Partridge? Well, obviously, Phoebe learned that Mrs. Partridge was blind. And they're neighbors, and she didn't know that. But remember, Mrs. Cadaver and Mrs. Partridge, which, you know, um, Mrs. Partridge is Mrs. Cadaver's mom. They just moved in next to the um, Winter Bottoms like a month ago. They haven't been living there too long. All right. So remember, there was blackberry pie that Mrs. Winterbottom fed to Sal. And the blackberry pie triggered some memories. Does anyone remember any of the memories that the blackberry pie triggered? Olivia. Um, when she was a little girl, she, a memory was um, her dad put out flowers for her and her mom. Yeah, put out flowers for her and her mom. And then also, can anyone remember about, that is one memory. Anyone know another one? I was thinking of another one that's has to do with blackberry, blackberries for sure. Olivia, do you want to continue? Um, her mother picked blackberries and made blackberry pie. No, her mother did not make blackberry pie. That was Phoebe's mother. But they did pick blackberries together. Remember, the blackberries on the top were for the birds. The blackberries on the bottom were for, like, the rabbits or whatever. And then the blackberries in the middle were for the people. So there was that whole few pages when they were talking about the blackberries. All just, you know, just this one food, blackberries, was able to bring back all of these memories for Sal. Okay. Number four. Well, not number four. But anyways... I need someone to tell me about the lovely encounter of who appears suddenly at the Winterbottom's door. Tell me about that in your own words. What happens? Landon, would you like to give it a try? Tell me, who came to the Winterbottom's door? There's a man that Sal thought, I guess his age was 17, around that, and he was looking for Mrs. Winterbottom. He was. And um, Phoebe suspects he's a potential lunatic. Okay, whatever that means. But how did Mrs. Winterbottom feel about the news? 
How did Mrs. Winterbottom react to this person being at her house? Um, Jameson, how did Mrs. Winterbottom react to the news? She didn't, she didn't want to tell her husband. Right. She seemed like, uh, like a little bit like worried about it. And then after all of it, like, well, she wanted to know every little bit of information, right? Like she was like, okay, tell me what he was wearing. Tell me how he was acting. Tell me what you said. Tell me what he said. You know, wanted to know every little detail of it. And then after all that, she was like, uh, let's not tell your dad. And obviously Phoebe was like, not comfortable with that. So we don't know who this guy is yet. He so far hasn't returned back to the story. We'll see if he returns back into the story. And then, so that was weird that he showed up. And then there was one other odd thing before we just finished off. What was the other odd thing that just happened in chapter nine? What was the odd thing? Someone I haven't talked to. Mackenzie, what was the odd thing that happened in chapter nine? Kenzie. The message that showed up at the doorstep. Right. Like they were just like leaving the house and there was a white envelope with a message written on blue paper. No name, no to, no from, just that lovely message. Don't judge a man until you've walked two moons in his moccasin. And it totally freaked out Phoebe and her mom. Her mom is asking a trillion questions. And the dad is like, who knows? Who cares? Like not a big deal at all. So right now I am finishing a question you are about to answer on Google Classroom for your homework today. The question is, Sal describes Phoebe as having a vivid imagination. Would you agree with this description? Why or why not? And you have to write at least three to four sentences. So let me finish the directions and then I will let you go to get started on this. It is going to be due tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Vivid? Yeah, like a wild imagination, like a vivid. She's really able, she's not just like, oh, the butterfly's blue. She's able to think like, oh, the butterfly's blue and it has sparkly. And then there's two antennas, then it has 14 legs. And like, she can really just describe things with her imagination. Please restate the question in your answer. You obviously have to use... Correct capitalization and punctuation. Be sure to write at least three to four sentences. So this is an opinion question, obviously, because I'm asking, do you agree with what Sal said? Totally an opinion question. So you're not going to be graded on your opinion. You're going to be graded on how well you uh, you will answer the question you know maybe use some text evidence that would be nice and um capital letters punctuation and all that nonsense okay so it is officially posted right now you are free to go work on that i will see you tomorrow when we continue reading do your personal best on your question 